Hey, Christy. <laughs> hey, Edith. What do you get when you cross poison ivy with a four-leaf clover? What? A rash of good luck. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hello, Christy. Hello, gardeners and wannabe gardeners out there. Welcome to Upside Down Tulips. If you have not listened before, we're so glad that you're listening this time. It's a great time to listen because today is the first day of March, Mm -hmm. which means that spring is just right around the corner, which means that we're all going to get out there. Yep. Start digging in the soil. So if you're a wannabe gardener, this is a really good place to start. Yeah, because we're going to talk today all about the March punch list. Things yeah. you should and shouldn't do in your garden this month. Absolutely. I got an interesting tidbit about March. I heard it said that March winds are necessary to encourage the trees to bend and flex their trunks to encourage the sap to rise and fill the dormant buds with new life. Oh my goodness, that's so interesting. So it's just another example about how wow. nature is so integrated with what's happening. Wow. Underground. Did you know, Edith, that it's also March 1st? For some reason, I don't know why, is National Minnesota Day, which is the, you know, my home state. Uh Uh-huh. No, I did not know that. (laughs) It's weird because you know what March 1st is like in Minnesota, It's cold, I bet. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know what spring was until I moved to Colorado because Mm -hmm. spring in March was just, you know, more winter where, where I grew up. Well, you know, maybe maybe it's National Minnesota Day to encourage people to be nicer. Uh, maybe. Just nicer. That's right. That's right. And Edith. Yes. March is also our favorite month because it is National Celery Month, Edith. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the whole entire month. The whole entire month. You know, tomatoes really don't have a month, do they? But the celery lobby, it must be really powerful. I tell you, since since last year that we, that we did celery month, <laughs> I have come to love celery. I love celery. I love it. We shouldn't make too much fun. Do you ever yeah. have you ever grown celery? Once, but it was so tough. I did something wrong. It was so tough I couldn't really eat it. Oh. Maybe I left it in too long. I don't know. I just grew it once. Well, of course, we'll have all the National Celery Month, you know, celebrations that we can look forward to. Absolutely. You can yeah. put up your celery tree. And, Get out your dental floss. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, seeing the celery carols, you know, all <laughs> yes. those things. I'm really, yeah. those, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what else is going on with you, Edith? Um, it's still early. You know, it's like only the 1st of March. However, I did winter sowing. I winter sowed cauliflower. And I winter sowed broccoli. Excellent. And then I found a packet of corn salad seeds. We talked about corn salad last week. Yes. It's a cool season loving crop. And this packet was from 2011 from the Rocky Mountain Seed Company. They don't even exist anymore. Oh, my goodness. So I thought, why not just... Throw them in the garden because you're supposed yeah. to broadcast them. Yeah. You was know. it was the was a seed packet open, Edith? Yes. Okay. So oh. I had you know I've been using it. So I did that. I planted uh, corn salad. We'll see if it comes up. Oh, I can't wait to find out. And um, do you have any other musings or anything? No, you know I have not done much in the garden. I'm just patiently waiting. I'm waiting for things to keep warming up, and waiting for the. I'm happy that it keeps snowing though. Me too. Okay, now I'm going to bring out my surprise. What? So this last um, September, I put some tomatoes in a jar to preserve them. My sister Uta had sent me a old re- an old recipe that she found in my mom's recipe box. It was from a newspaper from the 1960s, and this is what it said. Pick tomatoes that are sound and ripe, not soft. Leave the stems on. Lay in weak salt water, one tablespoon per gallon, for 48 hours. 
Then pack in a wide mouth jar without pressing down. Cover with two parts water, one part vinegar, cold. Pour something over them to keep them under the liquid. They will be as fresh as from the vine. This is how my grandmother kept hers. I love that. So I tried it. I'm going to show you. When I looked at it today to bring it over here, I have to say I was a bit in shock. Here we go. Since September. Since September. Okay, I'm looking at this jar, Mm -hmm. and it's a cloudy liquid which has some sort of white things in the bottom and white things in the top, but in the middle is floating bright red tomatoes. Bright red tomato. Very many white particles. I don't understand where they came from. Is that the, is that the salt? Because the salt would have dissolved, right? The salt? Yeah, you would think. Christy, does it smell horrible? Can Here. you tell? It smells like tomatoes. Okay. I'm what do you think? That. Yeah. Okay. I'm, a, I'm amazed how red that is. September. But, you know, vinegar does everything, doesn't it? Vinegar and salt? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how they did it old school, right? All right. But you know what what you could do? I mean, this would be great in soups. Yeah, it's not exactly firm. It kind of... It kind of fell apart when you took it out. It fell apart. But the color is amazing. The color, it does look fresh. Let's taste it. Okay, here I go. I don't think it's lethal. Ready? Mm Mm-hmm. One, two, three. Ew. Oh, my God. It's so salt. (laughs) It's so salty. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It's salty and vinegary. Yeah, it's very salty. Wow. I, I was worried about you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're right about the soup thing. I think they would yeah. work in a soup. If you I adjusted think. the, if you, or you could make a sauce, maybe a tomato sauce, as long as you adjusted the salt. And it's a little vinegary. Yeah, I, but I like vinegar. Okay, it's well. It's tart. So it's, much for, you know, I, yeah. don't, I don't think I'll be doing that again, though. <laughs> Our engineer is like, his whole body is clenched over there. Yeah, it, he, he is. He is a clenched fist over there. Now, folks, I just want to point out that we did this so you don't have to. We actually risked life and limb, did we not? Well, you know, one thing I'm interested about this, though, Edith, is like if you ever buy in the store um, roasted red peppers or sun-dried tomatoes, yeah, they're in... Like a vinegar oil mixture, aren't they? Like how? Did they- I didn't know they were in vinegar oil. I thought it was just oil. Oh, is it just oil? I don't know. I might be wrong because I tried to preserve garlic one time in uh, oil and it went bad. So I'm probably wrong. Oh, okay. So I don't know. I wonder if anybody else has done that. And if you have, will you let us know? Preserving tomatoes and salt and vinegar. Yeah. They look really pretty, but they were, they were vascularly weak. They just <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> As can happen to With the best age. of us. You're right. It's, it's just an age thing, isn't it? You know. Yeah. I try to soak myself in salt and vinegar, and I get, I just fall apart too. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, if there are words or terms you don't understand, mm. you just need to go to the ever funny and informative Upside Down Dictionary at our website, which is UpsideDownTulips.com. And there's also going to be links in our show notes that you should follow. Plus, we have fun stuff on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And now we have one of our favorite pop plays that was inspired by the day that I got a huge splinter. Fits like a glove. From the makers of My Secret Garden Valentine and Love at First Blight comes a romantic comedy about hands and gloves. Meet Sam Hand. Calloused and handsome, he thought he had it all. I don't need gloves. I'll just work in the garden without them. Until one day, the cosmos intervened. These cosmos flowers need to come out. A sliver. Just when you think you'll never find a glove, Glove finds you. Hello, I am Dr. Olivia Glove. I have a head for doctoring and a bod for removing splinters. Ah, got it out? You know, you really should consider wearing gloves. You make me want to be a better gardener. But sometimes finding a glove can get a little messy. I can't wear gloves all the time. I'm sorry. Gloves mean never having to say you're sorry. 
The LA Times calls it, hands down, the strangest movie I've ever seen. And the Pueblo Chieftain gives it four fingers and a thumb. With Edith Weiss as the kooky best friend who has seemingly endless time to provide comic relief and discuss the main character's problem. Sam, you are afraid to put on those gloves because, well, maybe, just maybe, they might be the perfect fit. I'm just a girl with a glove, asking a boy to put that glove on. I wanted it to fit. I wanted it to fit so badly. Fits like a garden glove, coming to HGTV this spring. Time for the March punch list. Here we go, folks. Things you should do or not do in your garden in March. But we should kind of do a zone disclaimer first, shouldn't we, Edith? Yes, we should. Absolutely. We're we're in Colorado in the Denver metro area, so we're zone 5B, probably growing into zone 6. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to tell you roughly what we do in our garden, but you should kind of, you know, if you're you're in zones that are uh, 3, 4, 5, that you might be talking, wait a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. If you're zones... Seven, six, you might be doing them a couple weeks earlier than we do. If you ever have a lot of questions, you can call your extension office in every state. He'll, they know everything. And um, a lot of it depends on the temperature of the soil. That's so true. And so. don't forget, you can also have microclimates in your yard, too. Mm-hmm. We don't know your yard, so. Yeah, we haven't been stalking you, have we, Christy? <laughs> um, one good way to know when it's time to get out there is if the temperature has been in the 50s for about seven days or more. Mm-hmm. That, that's a good way to f- kind of figure it out, the, the temperatures during the daytime. Mm-hmm. It's also important to re- make sure that the soil is no longer wet to form a ball in your hand so that you're not walking or compacting your soil. That's yeah. a little bit too soon. So if you go out there and it's really wet, wait a little bit. Yeah, Absolutely. That's a, that's a really good, that's a really good observation that you just had. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Edith, what about the veggie garden? What are some of the things you do in March? Well, March is huge. And my day is always St. Patrick's Day. That's just my traditional March 17th day to start planting things. Um, you can plant peas, parsley, the lettuce that you can plant, the most frost tolerant are romaine and butterheads. I know you're going to plant Romaine this year. Oh, yes, absolutely. Last week. Yeah, and peas, absolutely, on St. Uh-huh. Patrick's Day. Spinach, onions, leek. And I don't, I used, one year I grew asparagus, and I don't know what I did to it. It disappeared. Have you ever grown asparagus? You know, I haven't before. I remember we did that one episode on perennial vegetables because uh-huh. asparagus yeah. is a perennial bed. You know, I... Maybe I tried it once and I don't think it took, I think is what happened. Yeah. Mine was really, really skinny. It was like pencil, a skinny pencil. I think my problem was, was that my soil wasn't right. Mm, Okay. Well, if you do plant asparagus, it'll be coming up right. It'll be coming up in March. Oh, man. So that will not happen to either one of us. So that's (laughs) what I do outside, Uh direct sow. I will continue to winter sow. And I will also start seedlings, well, some of them at the end of the month, Mm -hmm. you know, so that they don't get too leggy and so that they're not too far away from the final frost state. That's what makes them leggy. And these are plants you start inside, right? Yes. Yes. Start them inside. I put them on the porch during the day in the hot sun, and then I take them in the house in the night. So you have them outside. I do have them outside when, on sunny day. You know how the sun is so warm here. Yeah, especially um, where your porch is, you get all that morning light. I get morning and I get the south mm-hmm. from the south. So that's how I've always done it. And it works really well. I've noticed it's also a good time in the veggie garden in March just to kind of examine your soil. It's a great uh-huh. time of year to do a soil test. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to know if you have you know, clay soil or sandy soil. We've actually have some homemade tests on our website, Edith. We do, don't That we? people can yeah. do. But here's a real easy one, is that if you grab some soil from your garden, you add a little bit of water, and it's a really big, hard clay ball, guess what? <laughs> you have clay soil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you add a little water to it, but it won't form into a boil, a boil, a ball at all, 
Then you have sandy soil. Now, the thing about clay soil, you can actually break that up by at, by adding compost to your soil, which is another thing I do when I can start working the soil in March to prepare for, you know, for the warm weather plants. Mm-hmm. I start digging holes and filling them with compost. Oh, excellent, excellent. The, yeah, and leaf mold. Oh, yes, of course, your leaf mold. Leaf mold. Tell, remind people again, Edith, about how you do leaf mold and what it is and why it's good for the garden. Leaf mold is is amazing. This is why uh, it's all over the forest. That is the forest fertilizer. The leaves fall. So I um, rake the leaves. I put them in a bag, a plastic bag. I wet them, and then I leave them alone. Do you, do, and you do uh, tie the bag up? Or is it I, loosely I, open? I fold it over and I put bricks on top oh, so that okay. it smashes it down a little. And then starting at the bottom, it turns into this incredible black soil. But even if it's not all the way turned, leaves are just fine to put as compost in your garden along with any of the soil you may have created in your compost pile. Yeah, it's one of those things that people felt like you couldn't have any, you had to rake up all your leaves and get rid of them. Never do that. No, 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 yeah. no, no. I don't do that. Um, I remember though when I was a kid, I mean, we would burn the leaves. Do you remember that? Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's like everybody had like a some sort of incinerator in the backyard and you would just burn things, burn your leaves up. It smelled amazing. I tell oh, you. Oh, I bet it smelled just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we don't do that. Um, well, speaking of compost then. And this applies to the veggie garden and the flower garden is that when it's when the sun is warm enough and if your compost pile is not frozen, it's a great time to turn it because mm-hmm. if your compost has just been percolating all winter long, um, you know, I, I now, I used to turn my compost once a year. Now I'm, I've doubled it. Oh, good for I you. I do it twice a year. And so, um, but sometimes this time of year I can dig into it and it'll actually be frozen. In the middle. Oh, wow. Because I, I, my piles are out in the open. And they're open. Mine mm-hmm. are, it, I have bins, black plastic bins, so it they never uh, get frozen. Now, there's two ways to look at that. Freezing kind of breaks stuff down, so that's not terrible. But not freezing, I think, also accelerates some of the, the decay. Yes. That's why I always have seeds germinating in my compost pile. Yeah. <laughs> Because it doesn't never gets quite that hot enough to get like squash seeds or things yeah. like that. Um, but it's good. It's great to turn that over to find out what's there. And then to amend your soil. March is a, can be a great time mm-hmm. of the year to do that. Um, um, amend it now. You can also go out and get some manure or some other, you know, other, you can buy compost or things like mm-hmm. that to just give it, give it a little extra love. Do a soil test first, though, is what I kind of recommend. I uh, did a get walk a around. One. My garden, the parts that are not under snow, because I noticed, believe it or not, I noticed garlic coming up. My wow. old garlic, not the new ones I planted. And I'm going to go out there every few days and check if I have any of the that lettuce I love. See if it receded like it did last year. Edith, if it receded to 150 plants last year, <laughs> what could it do? Oh, oh my what, gourd. What's it oh, my do? gourd. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I haven't been out to my vegetable garden at all yet because there's snow on it right now. So I'm a little careful about yeah. heading out there. But I may have, my, of course, my parsley will overwinter. So that might be mm-hmm. turning green soon. I've been using parsley from the garden. Oh, nice. Yeah. And don't forget, like, um, if you are in an area where we are, like I mentioned that I planted some seeds, well, we're going to get snow and the snow is going to protect those seeds and help them to germinate even though we're going to go to like minus five, I think. Yeah, where we are, it's it's lucky in that neck yeah. of the woods. That's true. It's a February morning. You've got your coffee. You've got your dogs at your feet. You've got your daily wardle. You should be happy, but something is missing. Okay, five letters. How about P-L-A-N-T? Hmm, I didn't even get one letter. All right then, how about W-O-R-M-Y? Not one letter again. M-U-L-C-H? No? Oh, come on, I gotta try different letters. S-E-E-D-S? No? Oh wait, here we go. A-P-H-I-D? Dang it! Out of tries again. This is so frustrating! Mm. 
Oh, oh shoot, I scared the dogs again. Petey, Petey Moss, come here, good girl. Woody, Woodchip, who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Sorry, guys. Mommy's just a little tense for some reason. When you are trying to remember passwords, does there seem to be a pattern? Hello. Thank you for banking with Too Big to Fail. How may we help you? I need to transfer some money. For our security purposes and for your protection, what is your secret word and or phrase? Um, I don't remember. The clue is my favorite thing to do. Oh, that's easy. Garden. No. No? Then gardener. No. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, gardening. No. You have one more chance. The clue again, my favorite thing to do. My favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to do? OMG, when can I start gardening again? That's it. It's a phrase. You really should write that down somewhere. Friends, if any of this sounds familiar, you're a gardener and we know what you're going through. Hang in there. You can still winter sow, or propagate your houseplants, or order your seeds right now. Spring is right around the corner. This has been a PSA brought to you by your friends, Christy and Edith, at Upside Down Tulips. I am obsessed with Wordle, Edith. So am I. I do it every morning. Mm -hmm, me too. I have 100% so far. I've done it like 25 times. I missed one. Oh. I can't believe how upset I was. I can't even, even believe I'm like, I can't believe I didn't get that. Yeah, it's fun. It's a really nice brain waker upper. Yes. You know? I love them. I hate it when there's, when a letter repeats. Yeah. that, that He's doing that on purpose to get you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I just, I love Orla and great job on that pod play. It was thank awesome. You. Oh, thank you. So let's keep talking about March punch list things to do in the garden March. Okay. Okay. And uh, of course, a large section of March is about spring cleanup. Mm-hmm. Which really applies to the flower bed. Uh, it, it's kind of tricky about spring cleanup because they say don't get out there too soon. Because if you clean things up in the flower bed too soon, yeah. you might be exposing the little plants and your perennials to upcoming freezes and things like that. But then they say don't get out there too late. Because if you get out there too late, it's harder to do cleanup and you could be damaging the sprouts and things like yes. that. Yes. So, I mean, you just got to do the best you can and get out there when you can, when the weather's nice and it's mm -hmm. been in the 50s for a while. Uh, for your perennials, you could consider cutting them back to maybe about five or so inches because okay. all that dead leaves and sticks like that. Uh-huh. Um, you get rid of them, put them in the compost pile, or some people do is they just spread them out into the woods. Because so you have you have left you have not done this in the fall because the bulb or whatever is nourished by the green is that correct? Did I just make that up? When it comes to tulips, uh huh, uh, tulips have a bulb, and uh, sometime in July the leaves will turn yellow and brown, and you can yeah. just brush them away. So you do want to keep the leaves up on tulips, okay. Until they have turned brown or yellow, and that's usually around July. For a, for a perennial bed, um, they'll just have a root structure. and that flower, So a perennial means it'll come back perennially. It'll come back every single year. It's different than an annual, which you just like a, like a, like a, a petunia is an annual. You yeah. plant it, it goes through its life cycle, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. A perennial will have root structure that will be alive all winter long, in fact, the roots in a perennial world will actually be very active during the winter. They'll grow deeper. Um, but on top, there'll be just a bunch of brown stuff. There'll be brown twigs and brown leaves. What will happen in the spring is that slowly at the base of all that brown stuff, green leaves and shoots will start to come up. And so everything that's brown at the top, you can get rid of. I okay. suggest leaving it to about... Five inches or so, not cutting it all the way to the ground mm -hmm. because then you're still protecting any little green shoots from potential weird weather freezes. Mm. Oh, okay. And then take the the brown stuff and put it in a compost pile. Or you can actually, some people just spread it out into nearby woods 
because what could be in those stalks could be little pollinators, little bugs, little mm-hmm. beneficial bugs that we yeah. want and like. Yeah. So try, please don't take all that garden waste and throw it in a garbage bag and have the garbage truck come and get it. Mm-hmm. Give it to somebody who has a compost pile. Though a lot of communities right now, they'll have like, you can donate your stuff to a community compost pile, right, Edith? Yeah. So yeah. you can check that out in your in your own area. Can you actually plant any flowers in the now in March? There is one you could do, and that's pansies. Oh, that's right. Pansies yeah. like the cold. They they're the do first too. things that come out at the nursery. Yeah. You can also plant English primrose out, and they're great in little containers. Okay. I've winter sowed some pansies, so we'll see when they start coming up. But yeah, they're the first thing you'll see out in nurseries, right? Yeah. You could plant them in March, and they might get snow on them, and they'll be okay in snow. Yeah. They might get a little crabby, but they'll certainly pop back. They, they have a lot of tolerance for it. If they do get damaged by the snow, if it's a really heavy snow, if you just cut off the damaged parts, they will come back. Uh, oh, on a perennial, yes. Uh, on a perennial. You don't want to. What about on a pansy? Yeah. Just cut off the damaged part because yeah. that way the plant doesn't keep trying to heal itself. Oh, right? that's great! Right, right, yeah. So that you cut give it bait, a, yeah, because the <laughs> exactly because the root structure, like you said, is mm-hmm. there, and that's the important yeah. part. So March is a very busy time for me when it comes to winter sowing, Edith. Uh huh. And folks, this is an outdoor method of seed starting, and we've got other episodes on that. And I'll, maybe I'll put some links. In the show notes about if you're interested to learn how to winter sow, because March is perfect time to do it. Yeah. Now, I already have about 15 jugs ready to go that are outside. And mm-hmm. these are perennial flowers that need stratification. So these are uh, seeds that need a lot of thawing and freezing for the soil to kind of scrape up against the husk of the seed to have it germinate. However, in March, in early March, there are... Um, um, other types of flowers and even vegetables and annuals that I will do that just need maybe moderate periods of stratification. So I will start doing some vegetables like you've done, Edith. I'll do broccoli, cauliflower, and leafy greens, or as I also like to call them, <laughs> griefies. Griefies, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and spinach. Now, sometimes I'll direct sow these into the ground, mm-hmm. but I think broccoli, cauliflower, those are really great ones to, I have a to question. winter sow. I have a question, something I just thought of. You know, the broccoli that I winter sowed is pelleted. That means that they have a, a coating on it So because broccoli seeds are so tiny. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's going to have anything to do with the stratification? I think it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Um. You can also do some herbs right now in early March, like dill or thyme, oregano, parsley. Those are great herbs to winter sow to. Oh, good. You And you can direct sow parsley. Parsley, it does not mind that. That's a good point, too. Mm-hmm. I think the difference would be is if you want to just get more assurance in your germination. And then if you want to be able to put it where you want to put it mm-hmm. in the garden. Yeah. That's, you know, it's another aspect of the success of winter sowing. So when it comes to late March, I will winter sow annuals like zinnias, cosmos, marigolds, calendula. Okay. I'll start doing that because it'll just be, you just want some warmer, these plants want more consistent warmth. Yeah. Uh, When it comes to vegetables, you can also start winter sowing end of March-ish, carrots, peppers, Pumpkin, squash, like zucchini, Uh and even tomatoes. Last Mm -hmm. year, I successfully Mm -hmm. winter sowed tomatoes, and then I kind of neglected them, and that was totally my bad. So I'm going to try to be better at it this year. Mm -hmm. And oh, basil. You can, at the end of the month, you could winter sow basil. Okay, that's good. um, Or other annual annual type herbs. What can also happen when you winter sow in is it's possible that some of your little milk jugs will germinate in March, depending upon where you live. You just keep an eye out for it because if they start to germinate, then you get a cold freeze. You could lose it. So if you have any germination in March, Mm -hmm. keep an eye out for the temperature. And you may either have to put a blanket over it or just put it in the garage or out on on your porch to protect it from a hard freeze. Uh, Edith, what about uh, trees? What do you... 
pruning trees mm-hmm. is also done in March. Now, the, there's a sweet spot between, you really have to be a weather watcher, you know, to be a gardener, because there's a sweet spot between when it's too cold in the winter and it'll damage, the cutting the tree will damage it, mm-hmm. but you want to get it before the sap rises. Yeah. So that usually, that's usually, I keep an eye on the weather and if, like, I won't do it when I know it's going to get really super cold, but okay. I will do it in March. Because um, if you wait too long. If you wait too long, then it damages the tree because the sap is already rising. Oh, gotcha. So you want to, any, hor- any you know, like vertical branches, any branches that touch each other, mm-hmm. too many branches on a fruit tree. And we're talking, I have a peach and an apple. Too many branches are also not good because you want air and sunlight to get into the center of the tree. Isn't that interesting? Because you would one would think that more branches mean more fruit and the mm-hmm. tree's so happy, but you really do have to more branches open it means up. more tiny fruit. Some ah. of which don't ripen. Mm. So I mean I also cull the the peaches when they come, but it's really important to prune. And those are the two things that I do prune. Here's a list of some of the things that I have that things you should not do in March. Okay. Depending upon where you live, of course, give it a week or two. Um, but in our zone, folks, leave your roses alone. Okay. Uh, people often think, oh, as long as I'm trimming things back. Yeah. But what you're in danger of is if, if, you're, is you're, if you cut it back, you're encouraging the rose to start to green up. And you can still get snow and freezes. And all it takes is one bad snow or freeze and mm-hmm. you will kill off that rose plant. It is interesting, but pruning anything does encourage it to grow, makes it stronger. Interesting. Yeah. Huh? So leave your roses alone in our neck of the woods until the end of April. Okay. That's what I do. That's good. The same is true, I think, for woody shrubs like lavender. Wait until the end of April. Okay. The plant will tell you, a lavender plant will tell you when it's okay to prune it because you'll see it start to green up. Mm -hmm. And if it's starting to green up, then you know that's when it's time to do it. So that's more of an April, May punch list for me. Okay. Um, Also, and something you should not do in March is don't lay mulch everywhere. What you're doing is you're smothering all your little baby uh, pollinators. Yeah. And beneficial bugs. So that's more of an April task, too, as I think. It's about mulch. Just good. good. Oh, we have to be patient, don't we? We have to be patient, but March is busy. Get busy, gardeners. We have enough things to do. Don't worry about those. Yes. Christy. Edith. What time could it be? Oh, please tell me. I think it might be mailbag time. Oh, thank heavens. Whoa. Ring, ring. Ring, (laughs) ring. Thank you for the twice. Ring, 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 ring. So here we go. Our ma- our mail. Ba- this is this letter. This is so cool because someone has been paying attention to our little pod series. Who killed Rosemary? Right. This is from Trixie Malone, <laughs> and uh, she says, "I'm assuming it's a she. I probably shouldn't assume. Trixie could be whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. They say." Uh-huh. I saw the Oregano brothers peeping into the bay window at Rosemary's house just last week. Coincidence? I think not. But I, for one, am just as glad she's gone. She was always a cheap lying slut, (laughs) in my opinion. (laughs) Oh, Trixie, no victim shaming. Poor Rosemary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but, you know, maybe is it shaming to be a slut, though? Not necessarily. Lying, you don't want to do the lying part, right? Sure. Sure. But it's, you know, maybe a better word just to have a healthy sex life, huh? But Okay. Now, how would that read? How would that read? That would be like, but she always was a healthy sex life having person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for this, Trixie Malone. What, and, a, what can, a fun note. And can I say, I think we've got some new suspects then for who killed Rosemary because... The Oregano Brothers. The Oregano Brothers. And then I'm a little suspicious also, Edith, of Trixie Malone. That's a very good point. Like, why did she write us Why is she throwing shade? Right. And who is she trying to put the blame on? She's trying to move suspicion onto the Oregano Brothers? Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, folks. Just stay tuned. If you have an idea on who killed Rosemary or you have gardening questions... 
you want to celebrate some successes or commiserate with us on some of your favorite failures, just write to us. Write to Mailbag. Upside Down Tulips at Gmail and or UpsideDownTulips.com. We welcome your letters. Folks, we were going to have the Dalai Lama stop by and inspire us, <laughs> but he had like a lunch date or something. <laughs> so Christy has agreed to give us our inspiration for the week. Big shoes to fill. Big shoes, Christy. Big shoes. He doesn't wear shoes. Big sandals to fill. This week's inspiration comes from Sitting Bull. Behold, my friends, the spring is come. The earth has gladly received the embraces of the sun, and we shall soon see the results of their love. Oh, that is very nice. The results of their love. Oh, that's nice. The Dalai Lama could not have said it better. Oh, good. And that's, folks, is the end of another fantastic episode of Upside Down Tulips. And who are we? We are Edith Weiss and Christy Munter Larson. If you got some laughs and some value out of this week's episode, could you do us a favor? You could subscribe, like, or follow us if you wanted. Just wherever you listen to your podcast, folks. Thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. And how about our acting friends, Jessica Robley and Drew Horwitz? Thank you. And a special thank you to our excellent yet enigmatic engineer. And an even more special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens on 41st and Harlan. Join us next week for another episode that will delight and amaze you. Woohoo! Hey, don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. <laughs>